I am very pleased to announce the second speaker of our seminar. Dr. Eric Koso from John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore is the Associate Director of the Pediatric Neurology Residency Program at John Hopkins and is a co-author of Treatment of Pediatric Neurologic Disorders and the upcoming fourth edition of the Ketogenic Diet. His specific interests include ketogenic, the ketogenic diet and the Atkins diet. The title of his presentation today is Modified Atkins, Modified Atkins Diet Update. Thank you. When uh, Susie and Margaret invited me to uh, come here, I jumped at the chance to come to Toronto. I uh, went to medical school in Buffalo, not far away, and used to come here quite often and uh, love the city. Uh, then Team Canada beat Team USA in the hockey finals, and I almost canceled my trip. But then I heard Elizabeth was going to be here, and I love to lecture with Elizabeth, especially when she goes first. Uh, so I decided to go forward and come to Canada after all. What I'm going to do today in uh, the next 40, 45 minutes or so is give you an update on the modified Atkins diet. Many of you have heard of it. Uh, some of you have used it. Um, so I think it's important to give you an update now that it's been actually seven years since this diet uh, was first introduced, uh, and there's a lot of myths about it and a lot of truths and a lot of real good new information uh, that I can share with you. Uh, maybe a little hard to see. This is a cartoon. Uh, shows Adam and Eve, and Adam is giving her an apple, and she says, no thanks, I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> she was probably right to have tried to have refused it. So what I'm going to talk about uh, in today's uh, lecture is first the basics of the Atkins diet. Number one, what is it? What is the modified Atkins diet? What exactly are the components? How is it designed? Uh, what does it look like? Then I'll talk a little bit about what I do, sort of a very common question that's asked to me in emails from dietitians, from neurologists, but also from parents, is how do you pick? How do you pick one diet over the other? I'll talk a little bit about my algorithm, so to speak. Uh, then I'm going to talk about sort of the basics, really how do you do it for a dietitian, for a parent, sort of what's the Atkins Diet 101. Uh, I'll briefly touch base on side effects. Elizabeth did a nice job talking about that for the ketogenic diet. I'll give you a bit of an update for what we know about the modified Atkins Diet in terms of side effects. Uh, then I'm going to talk in a large component of today's lecture about a new study that's uh, as of yet unpublished, uh, looking at a way to perhaps tweak the modified Atkins Diet, make it a bit more effective, maybe a bit more tolerable, uh, that I entitle the MADKC, and I'll talk about what KC is in a minute. Uh, then I'll get maybe a little bit futuristic. Uh, in the time I have at the very end, I'll mention where I think the modified Atkins diet may be going, should you invite me back here, maybe in about five years, what I may be talking about at that point. Uh, there's some interesting things that are already starting to happen with the modified Atkins diet that I've heard about and some that we're doing ourselves that I'll give you a, a bit of a tease about. So first, what's the modified Atkins diet? I'm going to start with a case, and I think Elizabeth did as well, and I think it's nice and illustrative. This was actually a modified Atkins diet patient number one. This was actually the first child that I ever put on the modified Atkins diet. This is uh, Casey, one of my favorite patients. And uh, Casey, back in March 2003, actually came to see my mentor, John Freeman, about the ketogenic diet. She was a clear surgical candidate. Uh, she was seven years old, had intractable seizures since she was a baby, having uh, up to 80 seizures per day, very intractable, uh, had tried and failed eight different drugs, and we talked to her about the ketogenic diet, scheduled it. We, at that point, had a relatively short waiting list. It was only a month. We said, you know, not a bad idea. Mom, go do some reading, learn what the diet is. She said, I have no idea. And we said, okay, you know, do some reading. Gave her some information. Uh, I told the family if they wanted to, the cookies, the cakes, the brownies, pasta, rice, they may want to just try to get rid of because that's going to happen in about a month. And the family said, well, what does that mean? I explained, well, it's kind of like the Atkins diet. And the Atkins diet was very popular in 2003. It's still moderately popular in the United States. So she said, oh, okay, I understand that. She stopped seizing. So two days later, the family called me. They said, do we still need to do the ketogenic diet? She had stopped seizing, 80 a day to zero. I said, come in, I need to see what you're doing. So we checked her ketones. I actually had a bet with Dr. Freeman, and I won. She was in high ketosis. He didn't think she might have been, uh, but she was. And we said, well, what are you doing? We looked at her food record, and it was pretty close to what the Atkins diet was. She was on a low-carb, high-fat diet uh, that was sort of mimicking what the Atkins diet talks about in their book. So we obviously canceled the ketogenic 
diet. She actually has never since to date gone on a ketogenic diet. And she stayed on the modified Atkins diet for about three years before eventually coming off it. So why did we even think about this? Why did it make some sense when we talked to this family and then when we went back and looked at what she was doing, why did it again seem to make some sense? Well, there's a lot of similarities between the Atkins diet and the ketogenic diet. This is really something that's been out there and some people think the Atkins diet sort of based some of their principles on the ketogenic diet, which as was mentioned has been around since 1921. The Atkins diet started about 1970, 1971 as a treatment for weight loss. There are a lot of similarities. The foods look quite similar high fat, low carb foods. If you look at what someone on the Atkins diet is doing, it looks quite a bit like the ketogenic diet. Uh, they both can be used long term. That's the purpose. It's not meant to be for a few days only. Uh, both of them can cause weight loss. On the Atkins diet, that's the main point. On the ketogenic diet, as Elizabeth mentioned, that's a side effect. Um, but irregardless, it can both happen. Uh, for many years, both therapies uh, have been looked at with some medical skepticism and really just recently with the Atkins diet, it's become more scientifically uh, seen and accepted. Uh, but what got our attention, as you can see here on the bottom, was that if you read the Atkins book, they talk about ketosis. It's kind of an interesting idea and we were surprised to read that in the book. And they say, well, it's a way you can measure weight loss. And we said, that's a way maybe it can help seizures. Who cares? Why do we need another diet? Well, there are some advantages to the Atkins diet that make it an option, and we'll talk about for who we pick one diet versus another. Uh, and it is, in a way, a bit more uh, easy to do, a little less restrictive, and that, again, poses some advantages. This is another one of our study patients. So there are some differences, and Elizabeth showed you sort of the differences in terms of a pie graph of what the diets are. Uh, you can see here the ketogenic diet on the left is about 90% fat, whereas what everybody has had for breakfast and maybe for lunch uh, is about 35% fat, so a big difference. The modified Atkins diet is kind of in the middle. Okay? If the ketogenic diet is a four to one ratio of fats to everything else, carbs and protein combined, the standard diet is probably about a 0.3 to one ratio. The modified Atkins diet in most of our food record analysis was about a one to one ratio, so kind of halfway in between. But the other advantages and really what got our attention and really made it an attractive option is that there's no calorie or fluid restriction, although many centers are not doing that anymore for the ketogenic diet, uh, certainly not for the Atkins Atkins diet, is that an option? There's no hospitalization, we still admit, as similar to Elizabeth and sick kids for the ketogenic diet, but for the modified Atkins diet, these children are not brought into the hospital. It takes about an hour to teach a family how to do it in the clinic, so it's different than a four-day admission. Uh, there's no weighing or measuring of foods. We just tell them, and I'll show you how to do it, how to measure carbs, so a little bit easier to do, a little more simple to do. Uh, and then there's no fasting required. I know here at Toronto they don't. We do a one-day fast. Some centers do. It's about 50-50 around the world. Uh, but on the Atkins diet, we do not fast. So why do I call it the modified Atkins diet? So in 2006, I decided to change it from the Atkins diet to the modified Atkins diet, mostly for three reasons. And I think there are three very important reasons uh, that it is different than the Atkins diet. So on the Atkins diet, they say high-fat foods are okay. Eat them, love them, enjoy them, they're okay. On the modified Atkins diet, they are critical, okay? They have to be high fat foods. The idea is that it should look like the ketogenic diet. Uh, probably the most common mistake I see when families come back is that they're on a high protein diet. And I tell them that really it's supposed to be a high fat diet. As my dietician will tell the families, your foods should glisten, okay? The food should be shiny and photographs. It should be high fat. The second way that it's again, quote, modified is if you read the Atkins book, they say 20 grams of carbs, but then go up 30, 40, 50, based on how much weight you're losing. On the modified Atkins diet, I start young children at 10, teenagers, adolescents, and then adults 15 to 20, and I pretty much stay there. I kind of leave them in the induction phase indefinitely. And then the last way in which it's modified is that weight loss is really not the main purpose. Okay, so my dietitian is very careful to look and make sure these children are not losing weight unless they want to, and we've had some teenagers who want to lose some weight. But in general, that's not the main goal on the modified Atkins diet. Some subtle differences. Again, as I mentioned, this is not a new diet. This diet's been around for seven years. Uh, I'm not the only one studying it. There have been, a little hard to read here, but 11 studies uh, from seven different countries looking at the modified Atkins diet. If you add up all the patients, and we're gonna get back to this, if you add everybody up together, there have been 129 children and adults published with about a 44% response rate. 
And we heard a little bit earlier from Elizabeth that the diet is probably 50 to 60 percent response rate. Most of us who use a lot of the modified Atkins diet say it's good, but maybe a little bit less than the ketogenic diet. We'll get back to that. Uh, but in general, we can have a very good response, about 28 percent having a greater than 90 percent response rate. And actually similar, as Elizabeth mentioned, to the diet, ketogenic diet working quickly, the modified Atkins diet also works relatively quickly, usually within about two weeks, knowing that it's a tough diet that's important to tell a family, I know this is going to be tough, but you'll know pretty quickly if it's going to work, and if it's not, you can stop it. Uh, probably a little hard to read, but people are looking at it as well for quality of life. This was a study out of Denmark where they saw that quality of life and cognition also improved, interestingly, uh, even independent of seizure control on the modified Atkins diet. How do I pick? All right, so that's sort of what the modified Atkins diet is. How do I pick one versus the other? It's tricky and it's very individualized. It really depends on the child, it depends on the situation, it really depends on lots of different factors. There are a few factors though that make me say, absolutely, this should be a child who goes on the modified Atkins diet. And then there are some who I say, really it should be the ketogenic diet. So here is sort of situation on the left and then which diet on the right. So the modified Atkins diet, the situations where I say it really makes a lot of sense to do instead of the ketogenic diet, uh, probably the main one is an adolescent or an adult. At this point, almost universally, a teenager over 12 or an adult, I will put on the modified Atkins diet. It's a lot easier to do, a lot more conducive to busy lifestyles as well. Uh, in interesting situations, maybe where there's less of a financial situation that will make the ketogenic diet an option, maybe a long waiting list, the family has limited financial resources, the admission would be cost prohibitive, those are situations where I might lean towards a modified Atkins diet, knowing that I can always, and we'll talk about this, go to the full ketogenic diet if I have to. Uh, a busy family with many children, we've had some families, we see a lot of Amish kids in uh, Baltimore where they may have 10, 11 children. I say coming into the hospital for four days is not an option. Okay, and they say, look, we all eat around a table, how do we share? It's probably a little easier with the Atkins diet versus the ketogenic diet. Uh, and then lastly, as I mentioned here, some emergency situations where maybe I can't let them wait a couple months for the ketogenic diet waiting list. Again, I may put them on the modified Atkins diet now, knowing I could switch them over, keep them on the waiting list if I have to. What about the ketogenic diet? Well, there are certain situations where it really, I wouldn't say couldn't be an option, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense. There's not a lot of advantages to the modified Atkins diet. Probably the main one is actually an infant or a gastrostomy tube fed child. They're getting ketogenic diet formula. Pretty darn easy to do that. Okay, the modified Atkins diet doesn't give them something above what it is, so I'll kind of lean them towards the traditional ketogenic diet. Uh, in some situations where it's a very young infant, my dietitian may just feel a little less on, a little less uh, comfortable doing the modified Atkins diet, which is a bit more loose. The families are on their own. She really wants to keep real careful contact, careful control in what kind of foods they're eating. So in those situations, she may really strongly advise the ketogenic over the modified Atkins diet. Uh, and then lastly, you know, there are just some families where, and Elizabeth and a lot of the dietitians in the room will say, I don't think this family could do the Atkins diet. They really need strict control. They need the recipes. This is a family who even before the ketogenic diet was emailing or calling every day. I said, boy, I, I think they're going to need the strict control, the real strict guidance that comes with the ketogenic diet as opposed to the little more loose modified Atkins diet. But other than that, you know, most of the other children in the mid-range, you know, it really kind of depends on the situation. I'll let the families decide to some degree. Again, some have very strong opinions one way or another. When do I switch from one to the other? Well, the ketogenic diet to the Atkins diet has actually been published quite a bit. There are a lot of children who are on the ketogenic diet for long periods of time. We'll transition them over to the modified Atkins diet to give them a little more uh, flexibility, a little less restrictiveness. Uh, or if they just find the ketogenic diet too restrictive, they're having too many issues with calories, calorie restriction, the modified Atkins diet might be a better option for them. Going the other way is a little bit unanswered, and we're starting to look at our data on that for when do you switch a child on the modified Atkins diet, becoming much more common nowadays, to the full traditional ketogenic diet, which is tricky. It means coming into the hospital now, uh, being admitted, it's a, obviously a bit more strict, and we don't really know the answer to that one yet. I think there are situations where a child is maybe not getting the high ketone levels on the modified Atkins diet, they're not coming under the control that maybe you think that they should, We've had situations where then we'll flip them over to the traditional ketogenic diet. But we don't really know the answer to this question yet.